free your mind. The Indian Hindu, in his philosophy of religion, they believe in God incarnate, meaning God coming down to earth as a man. That's the Hindu philosophy. And in that system of incarnation, God is taking human form. They believe that Rama was the seventh incarnation of God. Krishna was the eighth incarnation of God. Buddha was the ninth incarnation of God. And they believe in endless incarnations. See the Hindu reason. And his logic is very good. His logic is very good. The Hindu. He's a very logical person. Give that credit. He says that God Almighty is so pure, is so holy, is absolute holiness. If we agree with it, al Quddus, the Holy One, this is one of his attributes in the Quran. He's al Quddus, the Holy One. So the Hindu also says he's absolute holiness. He's like a holy robo. Now that holy robo, that's how he thinks now. What does he know? How man feels. Man. Let's say he sees a beautiful young thing. What does he know how the man feels? Does he feel the way man feels? Probably not. Then he said, what right does he to lay down rules for us? What does he know? <laughs> like somebody jokingly remarked about the Pope. Pope. See, the Pope made his pronouncement on the filth, the birth control, filth. So somebody remarked that the guy who doesn't play the game, what right has he to lay down the rules? <laughs> <laughs> Does he play the games we play? The Pope? No. So what right has he to tell us? You know, <laughs> you know four times three doesn't mean four times three, that's what the hell knows about four times three. <laughs> Similarly, the Hindu reason, he said, look, that God played the games we play? Probably not. And what right has he to tell us? Thou shalt not forget thy neighbor's wife. What does he know what is to forget? <laughs> so to be qualified, he should come down to earth as a man. He's born like any other human child. And as he's growing up, somebody's playing food with his mother in the absence of his father. And you know how he great, how he feels. As he's growing up, somebody's playing food with his sister. Now he knows how he feels. Now he's married, somebody wants to pinch his wife. Now he knows how he feels. So he's qualified. Now he's qualified to tell you, thou shalt not commit adultery, because he knows what adultery is. Thou shalt not commit thy neighbor's wife, because now he knows what he is to profess. He's qualified. Now that is the Hindu idea for justification for incarnation. God is only a man. The Christian, he says that before Jesus, God did not incarnate. After Jesus, he will not incarnate. He will not take human form. He is the only incarnation. Meaning, only time that God came down to earth as a man, he came in the form of Jesus Christ. What does the Muslim say? The Muslim says, God does not incarnate at all. He doesn't become human at all. What does he do? He chooses a man from among men, one of us, flesh and blood in all respects. But that person is so finely attuned, he's so sincere to God, that whatever God Almighty commands him on a higher spiritual level, what you call revelation, the electromagnetic wave of the spiritual world, that person hears those signals, those messages, and he conveys them to us on a human level, sound way. Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not commit thy neighbor's wife, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill. You see? On our human level, we can understand what he's talking about. Such a person, we say, is a prophet of God. He's a mouthpiece of God. He's speaking the words of God, but he's not God. So the Hindu believes in many incarnations, the Christian believes in one incarnation, the Muslim believes in many incarnations. Now this is in a nutshell. The Muslim reason that how can the Almighty, how can the ocean be contained in the water? The Almighty. You know, this is anything like you, this. No, this is the Muslim concept. God does not become a man, and it is not necessary for God to become a man, to understand the problem of man, because this logic is true. It's logical, but it's not true. If it is true, then God does not become, become a monkey to understand the problem of a monkey. He must become a donkey to understand the problem of a donkey. He must become a populist to understand the problem of a populist. What kind of a God is this? He says, no, the Creator knows what He has made. 
If you make the table, you know what the table is. You don't have to become a table to understand a table. <laughs> if you make the beetle for Swakhan, outside. You don't have to become a beetle for Swakhan to understand the Khorsa. The maker knows what he has made. If God made us, he knows. And as such, he is qualified and he is a pharisee. He has the authority to dictate to you, to tell you how this machine ought to behave. He has a right to give you instruction. He doesn't have to become a man to understand the thought of that man. <laughs>